Well, hey, welcome Lighthouse Church. What a great video. Uh, I miss seeing some of those regular faces. Um, just want to say hi to you. Like Pastor Kevin said, my name is Tyson. I'm part of the team here at uh, Lighthouse Church, and it is an honor to serve this church, serve the amazing people of this house. I miss all you guys so much. Um, some of you sitting right now on your couch, um, hi to you. Maybe you're sitting next to the pool today watching. Uh, wherever you may be, we are so glad you tuned in to join us today. It's going to be a great day in church. Yes, yes, yes. Well, hey, uh, you know, I don't know how quarantine's been treating you, but um, Pastor Kevin had said, hey, Tyson, we're going to have you preach, and instantly I got nervous because I was like, oh, no. I've been almost like, if you've ever seen the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I've been like Grandpa Joe. Like when Charlie got that golden ticket and he hadn't been out of bed in years, and he's like, Grandpa Joe, Grandpa Joe, and like I kind of leaned up and he, you know, and he's taught Pastor Kevin's on the phone like you're gonna do it and I'm just like I put my legs out I was like a brand new newborn baby deer you know legs are shaking and but I'm excited to be here uh this is the first time I've been in church in a while with jeans on I've watched church in shorts pajama bottoms um but yeah sweats so this is exciting it's an exciting day I'm I'm so glad to be with you but um as we started thinking about this and in this time that we're in right now is just crazier than anything we've ever experienced I mean talking with my grandparents and, and people and hearing them say, this is something we've never seen. I started to pray, God, what do you want me to speak? I don't, you know, I don't want to speak what I want because I know what I want to say. Like, I want to just be like, this is what I want to say. But God, what, what can I speak today that will stir some people up? And, and God put some stuff on my heart. And, and uh, you know, I thought we, we started to hear this. We hear this, even from my kids, I started to hear this. I just, I can't wait till this is normal again. I just want it to be normal again. Like, I just want to be able to just do things and it to be normal. And I started to think, and I said, you know, what is, what is normal? What did normal look like? You know? And then I started to think normal was, you know, you avoid a phone call and you'd be like, I'll just text them later. And now we crave friendships and we want to see people. A normal was, let me think of 15 excuses to not show up to this. And now we crave it. And I thought to myself, I don't know if I want normal. I don't know if I want normal. And, I, and, I, and so to title my message today, I started to think about it. And I said, I want to be better than before. And that's my message title today is, I want to be better than before. And, and I think about like, you remember being a kid and you'd borrow your parents' car or you'd go to the garage and to grab something from dad and he'd say, hey, you better return it better than you found it, Okay. You know, I, I have two teenage boys now, and when they take my car, if they take my car, I'm like, it better have more gas in it than when you got it, okay? And that's what I'm thinking. God's saying to me, saying like, hey, I want you to be better than before when we come out of this. I want you to be new. I got something new in store for you. And so I started to think about it, and I said, God, show me. Show me in my life. What, what, how do I become better? What is there that I need to be better? What are the blind spots? Where, where are the things I can't see and how do I do that? How do I become better than before, God? And I started to pray about it in, in Psalms 139, 23 in the Amplified. David gives us a great example here of a prayer that David is, a psalm that David is, David is writing. And he says this, he says, search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in an everlasting way. What a powerful, what a powerful prayer he was praying to God. And I, before we jump into this, I just want to pray right now. And so, uh, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to join with these amazing people of Lighthouse God. I pray, Lord, that right now you start to do a work in us, Father God. Holy Spirit, you start to stir up some things within our heart, within our mind, that are maybe holding us back from being better than before, God. I pray right now, God, that you just penetrate those spots that we've tried to hide, those things that we don't really know how to work on, God, that the, the fears, the anxieties, God, that you start to work on them right now, Jesus. In your name we pray, God. Amen and amen. Well, hey, uh, I always kind of wonder, do we really bow our head at home when we pray like that? Or do we keep it and really watch the screen? I don't know. This just a thought came to my mind. I just, my mind goes. So I don't know if you closed it. Great. If you didn't, you're, uh, you're okay. Yeah. But I think of this prayer that David prays and in the context of it, David is writing for God to search his heart for any evil, 
There's evil men around, the Philistines, and, and he's saying, God, show me. Is there any evil that I'm around? And, and, and it may not be evil that we're around right now, but what is those things that we're hiding deep down in our heart that we need the Holy Spirit to work on? Is it a hurt? Is it a fear? What are those things that make us anxious during this time? What are those things that keep us up at night at times? I pray that we pray, God, search my heart. Show me, Lord. Show me what those thoughts are. Show me what's in my heart. And, and that's a powerful, powerful prayer to pray. And, and I think about it. It's so bold to ask God to search you like that. You think about it. God knows your every single thought before you think it. He knows what you're going to say. And he's still saying, God, show me. I mean, God can, re God can reveal some stuff to him. You think, I think of in right now in quarantine, if I was to go up to my wife uh, or say you were to go to a best friend, a, a, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, and you were to just sit with them right now and just said, hey, why don't you tell me what offends you right now? Could you imagine how that could go into quarantine? Oh my goodness. We would, my wife was list would probably go until this thing ends. She'd be like, I'll tell you what, the 18 cups you leave around the house, the numerous times you've gone to the refrigerator and just left it open. I could tell you some stuff that offends me, but it's just a bold question to say, what offends you? God, show me, show me. And I think in this time, we're all having so many different emotions, feelings, thoughts, things that we've never thought about, new fears, and that's okay. It's okay to feel those things. But, but what is holding us back from being better than before? So today, I wanna, I wanna go through a couple thoughts um, and talk with you about some real things that I've, I've heard from people that are saying, that, that people are saying, you know, these are some real feelings that they're having right now. I've had friends that ask me, man, I've never seen this. I've, uh, my wife said, I've never felt this way. I, I see my teenagers that are nervous about things. And so I just want to encourage you in this time that what are these emotions and feelings that when as I talk about them, that we can have that prayer like David that says, God, show me. Show me how to deal with this. What does your word say about this? The, there's a couple. The first two I want to talk about, these are emotions that I'm seeing people go through right now, is doubt and anger. Doubt and anger. And, and I, I would want to pray, God, search me. Show me how to deal with these. God, show me how to deal with this anger I'm feeling. Show me how to deal with this doubt. The first one I want to hit on is doubt. And, and this doubt, can, it'll come in and it'll creep in and it'll hold you back from being a better you. And, and uh, God wants to move in your life. And, and doubting is okay. As a Christian, sometimes we think we can't doubt anything. We can't doubt anything. But I'm going to show you what the Bible says about doubt. Check this out. In John 20, 25, the New Living Translation. This is Thomas. You guys know Doubting Thomas, okay? Thomas is credited to taking the gospel further than anybody before. Took it to India, way out there. Like Thomas was in the Bible. He was, he was a pioneer of the gospel. So Thomas wasn't just like some regular dude. But this is what, this is what Thomas said about doubt. He said, this is the disciples, they're coming to him. They said, they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound of his side. You imagine that? Like, these are Thomas's boys. These are the disciples that he spent time with. Like, he knows they're not liars. Like, and he still says, mm-mm. Till I see it, I ain't believing it. Like, I want to see what's here. I don't believe you. And they're like, Thomas, we saw him. Like, all of our eyes. Like, if I was better at math, I'd tell you how many eyes saw him. Like, I don't know. But it's like, you figure there was 12, there's, Judas was gone. They saw him. And they're like, listen, Tom, Thomas doubted. And this time, you might be doubting. You might say, God, is this going to get any better? God, are you really working in this? Like, I don't see anything. God, like, this, this is real. It's okay to doubt. Thomas doubted. And, I mean, you, you think of it, like, even, even in our own life. You remember that bottle flip challenge game that people used to do? Like, someone would be like, I landed it. Mm -mm, no, you didn't. Look at the bottle. And they're like, I didn't even see you flip it. You could have just set it there. I got to see it for myself. So, in this situation, in this time right now, in this quarantine, you may be thinking, God, until I see you move, I just don't know. I don't trust. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. This is, this isn't, is it going to get better? But what I want to encourage you as we go through that and we start to have those doubts and ask God, search me, God, show me those doubts. Show me them. Show me in my heart where I doubt you, God, that I can be better. I want to encourage you to stir up your faith. 
Stir up your faith a little bit. Romans says it like this. Romans 10, 17 in the New King James Version, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What that means? Get the word of God in you. Focus on his promises. You know, sometimes we can let that, we, 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 we just have to choke out that doubt and we have to feed our faith to where we start to doubt our doubts. Because we're like, I, I don't know if I believe that doubt that it's not going to be better because God's word said it's going to be better. And we like when we're like where they are in Romans and we're talking about we're stirring our faith because we're in the word. We're repeating it to ourselves saying, God, you're for me. You're not against me. God, you're a miracle worker. You're the same yesterday. The God that healed then can heal now. Stir up your faith. Choke out those doubts. And next one, it was anger. Anger is a real thing right now. People are angry. People are mad about things. I think, you know, you, you think about it, and this isn't me in particular, but people are mad at their spouses right now. People are mad at kids. Like, I'm so glad my kids don't have homework right now. They're old enough that I'm like, I don't like homework. So I'm like, I don't know. Like, my sister called me the other day, and she's, I'm talking to her on FaceTime, and she just does one of these parents things. Would you stop? And I was like, what's going on? Chloe has asked me the 17th time to explain something. I'm not a teacher. Like, I'm like, she's angry. People are angry right now. People are angry at bosses. People are angry at coworkers. You know, I hate to go there, but people are angry at politicians right now. Like, what are you doing? How's this supposed to be? We, it, but it, it, here, we, there's anger there. There's, there's anger. It's real. People in the stores are angry. We were in the store the other day and someone didn't see the, the line and this lady cut in line. This lady come running right at her. Excuse me. I don't know what makes you better than everyone else here. Could you please get in line like everybody? Lady's like, oh, I didn't see the line right there. I'm like, oh, how did you not see it? How? I'm like, people are angry. Anger is a real thing right now. But let me tell you about anger. The Bible doesn't say anger is so bad. This is what the Bible says about anger. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 in the New Living Translation. And do not sin by letting anger control you. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. The Bible never, never once says anger is bad. It's not like if, you, if you're angry, it's sin. No, what happens is, is when anger drives you to sin. When anger drives you to sin. When anger gets in your life, the devil gets a little foothold in there and says, whew, oh, you better post about that on Facebook. Oh, you better call all your friends and tell what happened. You better, oh, you better tell somebody about it because whew, then the devil's got a foothold. And that's when, become, that's when anger can become bad. That's when anger can get a part in your life. And, and so I just want to encourage you that, that how we react to anger. And David says this in that verse. He says, he's, David said, show me any hurtful way in me. Any, any hurtful way in me, God. God, is there anger in my heart? God, I don't want to carry anger and grudges out of this thing. I don't want to be angry towards people. I want to come out of this thing with a newfound love for you, Father God, a newfound love for your people, Jesus. I want to love people better. I don't want to leave this thing with anger and grudges towards people. Don't let anger drive you to sin. Don't let the devil get a foothold during this thing. I, I just want to encourage you that the Proverbs 16, 32, it talks about being slow to anger. It says, better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to conquer a city. In this time when we start to become angry, and anger's real, I, I, with, with, from children to spouses to being cooped up, it's, it's ang you could get angry. But I want to encourage you every single night, God, pray that prayer, search me, God. Show me what, show me what the anger is that's, that, that's holding me back from being better than before. Show me, God. What does that look like? And, and next two that I want to talk on that two Two emotions that's real right now that, that I've seen more than ever is anxiety and worry. During this isolation, I've read so many stories and seen so many posts about people that have never had anxiety or, or worry like this. It's, it's, it's crept in. This, this isolation can cause it to creep in like never before. I know I've, ta I've talked before and I've shared a little of my wife's story. And my wife was talking the other day and she just, she was saying, I, I don't know if this is, will this, when will this get better? I know God's good. I know God's promises, but when will this get better? When? What does it look like? And we go back to that Psalms that David said, David asked God, he said, David said, God to test him and know his anxious thoughts. I want to encourage you. 
You may be sitting there behind a the screen right now by yourself, alone, thinking, is this it? You may be so anxious right now. I want you to just say, God, what are those anxious thoughts? God, what are those things that keep me up at night? God, what are those things that keep me from rest? I'm supposed to rest in you. What are those things, God? Show me, Jesus. What are those things that cause me to withdraw from people and in a fear to tell people about it? I want to encourage you right now to, to just, we have people that would love to, to pray with you. We have a prayer room right over here that you can jump on, request prayer. We have an amazing care team at this church. And, and you can find it on the, uh, on the website. And we have a care team that wants to walk alongside you. You're not supposed to do this alone. Jump in there. Jump on one of them Zoom calls we talked about on Tuesdays. You know, there's one for the men and for the women. You can find that info on our, on our website too, but jump in those. Get in community. Don't do this alone. Don't let the devil hold you back with anxiety and worry. And, and like David said, to ask God, what is it? What does it look like? You know, how, God, search my heart. What makes me anxious? God, show me, Jesus. Show me. I don't want to do this alone anymore. And, and I think about it and I asked my wife, I said, what? I said, honey, I almost said wife. No husband has ever addressed him like wife, <laughs> right? You better be LOLing on the floor right now about that one. Hit me with a ROFL on the, in the chat room, please. If it's that side, hit me with one of those. Let me know that joke worked. I don't know. But I said, hon, what, what is it? What is this anxiety and worry and how do you cope with it? And she said, what I do is daily, I have to give it to God. I have to give it to him daily. I have to leave no room in my mind for those anxious and worrying thoughts to get in there. And I, I, I want to paint this picture of this is, is those things just weigh us down. And I want you to picture picking those up, that anxiety, that worry, picking it up and putting it at the feet of the cross, transferring it every day to say, this isn't mine. Yes, it's real. I get it's real. I, I, I've seen it in my home. It's real. But there is a God we serve that's real too. Pick it up and say, God, this is yours. I can't take this today on my own. Pick it up, give it to him, transfer it to him. So when we come out of this quarantine, you're more victorious. You have hope. Yeah, worry and anxiety may still be there at the other side of this, but you have a new hope. Because you have a new hope because you said, God, what is that one spot in my heart? Every single day that hurts. I need you to come in and just do what only you can do. That you can mend it, God. I, I just encourage you, search me, God. Show me what the fears are. Show me what, what brings me to worry about things. Is it going to be better? Is it going to get better? God is for you, not against you. In 1 Peter 5, 7, the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. That's easy to, to say. It's really easy to say, but I want to encourage you to really do it. When you wake up and have that worry and you've prayed, God, show me. I want you to just give it, God, I can't do this alone today. Here you go, God. I want you to find a, one of this Lighthouse Church family that loves you. If you're newer here and you jumped on today and joined us, email us, please. We want to walk on this journey with you. We even, have, we even have mental health doctors that have said, I want to help in this time for free. Don't do this alone. Don't carry that burden. Pick it up. Cast it on God and say, God, I can't do this. I need you. Don't go through this. On the other side of this, I promise you, you are going to be better than before. Next one I want to talk about, and this one for me is, is real, and this creeps into my life, and it's fear. It's the fear of the unknown. It's scary. You know, we have this fear right now, this fear of being alone. We have a fear of, uh, of safety for our families. We have a fear of what's going on. We have a fear of, are we going to be able to provide for our family? If you were to pop on the news right now, you, it would cause so much fear and you'd see it and you'd say, oh my goodness, I, this is all real. I know it is, but it's, it's this fear thing that pops into our life. You, I think of a story one time we were in a, I think it was, it might've been Memphis and we were driving somewhere and, and the phone gets down to 1% and I don't have a charger. And when you got Google maps and you don't have a charger and that 1% and the fear of not knowing where you're going, it gets real. It's like, can you just, can somebody get this to memory? Where am I going to be turning? What street? I think it said Davidson Street. Or, I can't have you think. I got to have you know. Like, this is scary. Like, I don't know what neighborhood I'm turning into. Someone put it to memory. Get a pen and a paper or at 1%. Like, that fear of the unknown is true. It's scary. What's it going to be? What's it going to look like? I, to, this week, it popped up in my own life. Um, my wife, she got a call from her boss and said they, she hadn't been working, but they'd been, they, they said to her, hey, we just want to let you know there will be no further pay anymore 
first thing that popped in my mind was this fear. God, how are we going to do this? What's it going to look like? I, I gave this little, I gave this little fear, just a little foothold and it started to work its way in. And then I thought, well, hold on. You know, there's this quote that I love by the amazing Joyce Meyer. It said, fear is just a down payment on a problem that's not even happened. I said, well, hold on. God is my provider. God is for me in this whole thing. I I'm over here fearing all this stuff. And what happens is, is fear will paralyze you from your purpose. Fear holds you and says, whoa, 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 whoa. you can't do this. Oh, oh, what's it going to look like? Hold on, hold on. I want to encourage you that in this time, even though fear may hold you back, you just remember to go to God and say, God, you've not given me a spirit of fear. God, you're for me. You're not against me, you know. As this, don't operate in fear, but operate in God's promises. And we, we hear the great passage from Psal in Psalms 23, 4 that we've heard so many times. And it's Psalms 23, 4 in the New Living Translation. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I'm not afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. We've all heard that verse. And as I started to read it, I started to think, God never says, there will not be any darkness where you go. But he says, in that darkness, I'm going to come beside you. Even though you may fear, I'm going to be beside you. And David paints this amazing picture of God as this shepherd. You know, the Bible, he says he's our shepherd and we're the sheep. And I started to read this. Has anybody ever read that verse and really thought, like, I, I just maybe have read it, but I thought, what exactly is God's rod and staff? I was like, what does that mean? So I started to look. And as you look, this rod was this club that they would carry to protect their sheep when evil would come. When, it, when, the, when the enemy of the night that would come to take one of those sheep, an animal, that, that rod would protect them. And it says right here in, Psalm, in Psalms, it says, his rod will protect me. God's going to protect you through this. God's got you. When fear comes, when the darkness comes, God's got you. And then I love this, that the staff, the staff was that it has the hook on it and it guides the sheep. When the sheep got into the thorns, that could get in there and get them and pull them out. And then what also that staff does is those shepherds would rest on it. And God's saying, I'm your staff. Rest in me. When fear comes, lean into me. When that foothold of fear tries and you try to operate in that fear, God says, rest in me. I'm your rod and your staff. Yes, darkness will come, but I'm going to protect you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to guide you. And as I start to wrap up, there's one more that I think about in we, we, this one's a hard one for people right now, but this one's my favorite. It's, it's, it's my favorite. And it's, this is a hard one to find in a time like this is joy. How do we find joy? This is a real thing right now. This is, this is, this is real. Something we've never seen. We're, we're, you know, family have, people have family members dying. People are losing jobs. I, I heard just the other day that half of LA County is laid off right now. How do you find joy? Where do you find joy in a situation like that? And I think sometimes, and I think what we've let the devil do and, and with the situation we're in is we let the devil quarantine our joy. We've let him take our joy and put it and say, we can't find joy. And I just want to encourage you to continue to find joy. Even through all of this, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy is hard to find and it's in, in a real situation, but God's joy is, it fills you up. It gives you a peace, I promise you. I was just thinking the other day, and it, this Monday, yeah, Monday the 20th, was two years since my dad passed away. And I sat there that day, and yeah, there was some pain. Yeah, it felt real, but I had this joy. Because I, I just know God's joy is my strength. So I wanna just tell you that joy, you can find joy. And the mo one of the most important things is, is people need your joy. We have a hope in a joy like never before that a lot of people don't have. People need your highs. People need your phone calls. People need your smiles. I can't wait till we're back in this place. I started thinking of just amazing people like Paul and Christine Dorthalina and just your amazing highs and hellos. Lynn Lee at the front door and her high and Lynn, your friend Jenny, that's a, that's a school teacher. And I know right now she's probably sitting home having to teach kids on computer, but Jenny always has a smile on her face, always. I think of the Sparmans. 
just the smile they have. Larry Moisson, I miss you. That amazing smile you have. People need your joy. Don't let the devil quarantine your joy in this time. Yes, this is real. I get it. But find your joy. Find it. Romans says this, 15, Romans 15, 13 in the Amplified, it says, may the God of hope fill you all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope and overflow with the confidence in his promises. I want to have a new joy. I want to leave this thing happier than ever before. I don't want to come out of this thing and people go like this, man, that quarantine beats you up. I didn't even know if you were saved anymore. You man, I never seen you smile once, but I want to come out of this thing. People saying, oh my goodness, your encouragement, your phone calls. So I just want to encourage you right now just to, God, search me. Maybe I'm hurting. Yes, the fear is real. Yes, the anxiety is real, but God, joy. I need joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength during this time. Don't leave this quarantine without joy. We got to come out on the other side of this. God's wanting to teach us something. And all these things I mentioned today, they may not be your struggle. They may look different. I may not have mentioned an emotion you're feeling, but I want to encourage you right now to just pray that prayer like Psalms. Just search me, God. Show me. Know my anxious thoughts, God. What makes you anxious? As you sit there today, you may have those thoughts racing through your mind. And I want to encourage you this week to just pray about that and say, God, show me. I want to leave this better than before. I want to come out of this thing with joy on the other side of this, knowing that I learned what you were trying to teach me, God. I just want to take a second to pray right now. I want to pray for a couple things that maybe I did mention one of these was yours. Or maybe it was something else. I just want to encourage you. We, I want to pray right now for you. And also I want to just encourage you, that team that wants to pray with you, reach out to somebody. Don't do this alone. So we're going to pray. God, I thank you right now for your word, Lord. Like David said, search us, God. I pray as we sit there, maybe we're with our family, maybe we're all alone, but search us, God. Show me the things that might be hurtful to me. God, know my anxious thoughts. I, I, I pray right now that that thing that you've been dealing with that you didn't want to bring to the forefront, I pray right now that you start to work it out. That thing that you know brings you anxiety, that brings you worry, start working it out, talk through it. Let God, the, the ultimate, just the, the heart mender, the peace giver, the healer, do a work in your life and touch parts of your heart and your mind that you, you were afraid to bring up. I pray right now, God, that you start to heal people right now. People that may be struggling with anger, God, that you give them peace. You give them patience, Father God, that they don't let the sun go down on anger, God. I pray those that are having a really hard time in all of this, that may have been affected with jobs, with family, sick, God, that you give them joy, that you give them peace, that we don't have to worry, God, because our life is in your hands, Jesus. And lastly, I just want to pray for anybody that may not know God, that may have tuned in today and, and said, I, I don't know, I, I, I've... I don't really know this God you speak of, or, or maybe you had a relationship with him. I want to give you an opportunity to accept Christ. And I know it, this is from the comfort of your own living room. And like Pastor Kevin says, clicking that button doesn't get you saved, but it's confession of your mouth. And so as you sit in that, that room today, or you, you know you're next to the pool, wherever it may be, you can pray this prayer right now. And as you say those words, you're saved. But also I want to encourage you, if you do, after this, pray that prayer, click that button. So we're going to pray right now. And if it's you and you're sitting home, repeat these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I invite you in today to be the leader and the Lord of my life. I pray today, God, that I do not leave here the same. Come and change my heart, God. I love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. Well, we're going to get back into worship. If you pray that prayer, jump in, jump in that room right now. Click that button.